uncover the hidden world of political campaigns in just five minutes. Join me, your host, David Washington, on Countertop Politics every Monday for exclusive campaign insights, tantalizing innuendo, and the secret sauce behind successful political campaigns. Don't miss out. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Hey, it's Countertop Politics again. Every Monday, five minutes, campaign insight, political innuendo, and the secret sauce to winning campaign strategies, period. All right, hey, go White Sox. You know, way to tie that record for the most Major League Baseball losses by a team in one season. Six more games left. Yay. Anyway. So, hey, you know something? Let's talk about what's easy. I mean, really, in, in, in politics, there's really not much that is easy to accomplish or do. It's all hard. However, when it comes to one of the all-time low-hanging fruit events, <laughs> I'm getting all excited here is the overseas military ballots. And I just want to share something with you very quickly that here in Orange County, Florida, um, the first round of ballots for this year's 2024 general election have been sent out. And the uh, Orange County Supervisor of Elections, our friends, Glenn Glazine, um, his office said that they have sent more than 15,000, 15,000 military and overseas ballots to register voters. Again, election day is November 5th here in Florida. Residents have it till October 24th to request a vote by mail ballot. And October 7th is the last day to register to vote here in Florida. Okay, so saying all that, I just want to say that the 15,000 military and overseas ballots uh, to um, citizens who are not in state at this time and have requested their vote by mail ballot is it, it, it's an easy population, a very operationally simple demographic to reach out to early in your campaign. I mean, not like a year before or six months before. However, these are the folks who are probably in a position to do a little bit of research or really appreciate the fact that a candidate has personal reach reached out to them. So what I have is a document uh, that my candidates can use and customize to their particular style, their candidacy, their campaign, their election, their demographic um, that's available at the beginning of their, you know, um, campaign. And uh, I let them know, you know, you know, look over this document or prepare your own and uh, be prepared at least maybe no later than, you know, four or three weeks before your county or district supervisor of elections sends out the military and overseas citizens ballots and make sure you sign it. Make it a personal note. Make it a little postcard. Just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. This is who I am. And I'm trying to earn your vote because every vote counts. We had in the primary here in Florida, uh, in Orange County, a county commissioner district race. Um, and the incumbent, if it was just between the incumbent and her challenger, she would have won by two votes. I'm pretty sure knowing the caliber of the campaign and the caliber of uh the candidate as a campaigner, 
they probably did not reach out to the overseas citizens and military who requested a ballot, a vote by mail ballot, and were eligible to vote in that district race. Every vote counts. And this is one of the demographics, um, a, a demographic that, that candidates and campaigns largely ignore. The data is there. You know, whether, you know, you get your data from us through our license with L2, or you get it from the supervisor of elections or the divisions, division of elections, whatever. But the, 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 the information is there. And there is no excuse. May, let me make this crystal clear. There is no excuse in having a strategy for reaching out to the vote by mail overseas and military demographic. There's no reason. So saying that, hey, it's been quite the election cycle. Check me out on live now from Fox with our friend and host of live now from Fox, Stephanie Quinn Yu. Um, some great conversation. She, she asked some difficult questions, kind of caught me off guard on the Lieutenant Mark Robinson que um, question, but had the opportunity to meet him a couple of months ago. And, uh, like I said, uh, what you see is what you get. And, uh, we'll see how that turns out in November for the Lieutenant Governor there in North Carolina. But anyway, our newsletter is coming out. Um, I am personally involved in that. Uh, there's some tweaks I'm making. There are some tweaks across our website that we've made. There's some more on its way. Uh, of course, you know, check us out across all of our social media. And why not check out From the Margins with James Afont and David Washington, two legacy Democrats going after it, talking about what can be better, what is good, and what we can learn from the past here in Democratic pol politics in Orange County and Central Florida. Um, it's quite interesting. Hey, check out our friends, uh, Orange County Watch also. Uh, on October 5th, uh, they are meeting at their usual location, nine o'clock in the morning at the Denny's at Cimarron and Lake Underhill. And they're going to have a rundown of the Florida Constitutional Amendments and the Orange County Charter Amendments. And that will be presented in a forum setting with Erin Huntley, the chairwoman of the Orange County Republican Executive Committee, and Samuel Viches Santiago, the chairman of the Orange County Democratic Executive Committee. It's going to be quite interesting. We'll see you there and tune in. Check us out from the margins with Jimmy F. Fine, David Washington. The David Washington Show. Oh, yeah. With yours truly. And don't forget our flagship podcast. You can't make this shit up. We're going strong. And I hope you all are enjoying our new hostess, Cedra. She's been great. And again, we'll see you again next Monday with countertop politics. Take care. Peace. All right. I love this music. I love doing this. I really do. Can you guys tell? Can you? All right. We'll talk to you the next time. Bye now. <laughs>